Jennifer, you're very welcome this morning. And lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Cahir Locke. And um, I also want to thank the witnesses um, for today. And look, I think none of us can ever underestimate the amount of work our ambulance paramedics have done, particularly even now during COVID and our, our, um, our, our fire service. And it worries me that we're not giving them the recognition they, they deserve, but also that there's a burnt out element there. And that is something that we, we need to address. And it is really worrying and concerning. Um, and I just want to ask Ted, Ted, we, we know that there is a process of discussion with SIP2 to IARC. Can you actually tell me who elects IARC and who they who they are, if you don't mind? Do the ambulance management ever actually talk directly to the staff on the ground? And is there a process in which to do so? And can you explain how this works as a possible assistance in improving going forward? Because there is definitely huge issues there. Thank you. Right. In relation to IRAC, IRAC is elected by our membership, our general membership. We've actually, on IRAC is made up of not only SIPTU, but also UNITE, trade union. It's also, I'm, a, I'm aware you see that it's SIPTU, UNITE and FORSA represent the National Ambulance Service. They're the three unions. FORSA would represent all the clerical staff and they would also represent some officers along with SIPTU. Um, UNITE would um, you know, normally represent the paramedics, um, ambulance personnel in the Warford area and also in certain parts of the North East and the North West. Um, the IRA committee is ele elected throughout the, the, the 26 counties. There's representatives, there's 13 in total, um, and, and they're elected for a period of five years. And that then in turn comes up to um, when it's the in turn in that committee deals directly with management. Each of those IRA committee members feeds back directly to the members in their localities. And that's how that actually operates. And then we have a series of general meetings um, with with staff members and the various the officials dealing. I deal with the National uh, the, the National Ambulance Service on behalf of SIPTU uh, for all the national issues. And we have a number of local officials on the ground who in turn deal with all the localised issues in the various counties. And they in turn meet members. Physical meetings in the last year and a half, two years, has been virtually nil because of COVID. And a lot of our meetings now are done through Teams, Microsoft Teams. And do you feel that there's discontent within the members on the ground, the members that feel that they might not be listened to? Do you feel that there's a disconnect? And is there any way of improving that? Because I know that in different areas, I see it myself. And I just kind of feel that our ambulance paramedics, that on the ground is where they can address issues and problems that they know are there. So while we have management, and I, and I welcome all that, but... Look, at the end of the day, and you know this yourself, if you're a paramedic in an area and you work there, you will know what is happening on the ground. And if you cannot get that particular issue to your management or to whoever your unions, whatever, that becomes a huge issue. So do you have concerns about that? And do you feel there is another way that we could look at addressing our, our, you know, our, our members on the ground that they feel they have more of a say in it. Because I feel from speaking to some paramedics that they do deserve, they feel, some of them, that they need to be listened to more. Do you think that that can happen and how can we make them changes? Well, like I said earlier to one of your colleagues, um, I came into this this role on the 4th of July. Um, I have made substantive, substantial changes in how SIP2 runs this business um, within the general membership. We are trying to get a shop shut um, set up in each ambulance space in this country. We are in the process of issuing um, a newsletter to all our membership within SIPU that outlines everything that has been achieved since we took over on the 1st of July with all the concerns that has been raised across um, the country on behalf of our membership. Um, if a member in any part of the country has any issue, they will contact their local shop sort, who will in turn contact their local official. If it's a localised issue, it will be dealt with locally. And if it's a national issue, it will be referred to myself and dealt with to IRAC. Thank you. And thank you very much. And do you feel there's consistency there with staff? Or do you feel even within the roles that there's a lot of movement from one area to another? Um, and that's another issue that I feel that might be need to be looked at, like that things are changing all the time. Um, and even through posts, whether it's a management post or there's a lot of posts not 
uh, not permanent, there's part-time, there's whatever. So there is a lot of movement within the sector itself. Do you find that, do you have that concern for that? Well, when you say there's a lot of movement now, I don't understand. Are you saying a movement to staff relocating from one area to another? Well, particularly management. I mean, what way are we in roles of management? Is there full-time roles of management that are there constantly? Or is there other issues maybe that there can be, you know, maybe movement from from one sector, like maybe from an area around the country to whatever? So I'm just wondering, like, you know, with the base itself, is there always someone there, you know, in that base to represent uh, the, the ambulance paramedics? Okay, up to recently, um, and sorry, up to currently, there's not, right? No. The situation is quite clearly. Management of the National Ambulance Service operate a situation of Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. After 5 o'clock in the evening to 9 o'clock in the morning, Monday to straight through to Friday, there's no one there um, after 5 o'clock in the evening, or from 5 o'clock in the evening to 9 o'clock on a Monday morning, there's no one there. Um, the National Ambulance Service, and we represent the officers along with um, our, our, our sister unit Forza, and um, um, a business plan has been submitted to government and has been approved that there will be an increase of about approximately 136 new officer positions um, in the National Ambulance Service over the next three years. And that will um, um, necessitate 24-7 um, cover. And that will come into being. There is issues on behalf of our membership in officer grades around that and that needs to be addressed as well. Um, but that's a separate um, discussion in relation to what we're discussing today about on the road and the delays there.